Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Grubb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. So what I wanted to talk to you guys today is about how to maximize your education while in college. And we'll be targeting the industrial automation space because this is Elite Automation, an industrial automation YouTube channel. But this will apply to anybody really going for any degree. But the different particular things that you'll be practicing and studying will be different. And also this will apply to people who are not in school, people who just want to overall increase their career. And this will also help anybody who's just trying to grow in their career and increase their skills sets and whatnot. So let's just go ahead and say that you're going through some type of robotics program, you're going to do industrial automation type of work, and you overall just want to get the most out of college and whenever you get out of college you want to be able to know more than the people around you so that way you're more applicable to a job and you're more likely to be hired. So the number one thing you should do to maximize your education in the industry is to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be providing all kinds of value as far as how to get jobs within our industry how to grow your skill sets, how to set up different industrial devices, what are the new technologies on the market. We're going to be discussing anything and everything industrial automation related or food processing, things along those lines involving robot cells. And at some point, we'll even start taking you all through some like vlog style videos where we go through and develop systems and you're able to watch a system be developed from the ground up. I think the number one thing that's going to help you grow your skill set is working with the actual devices that you want to work with. If you're wanting to get into controls engineering, you need to be working with PLCs, robots, and be doing PLC programming, robot programming. If you can get your hands on the, the PLCs and the software used to program those PLCs, and if you can, work with the leading brands of the industry. So like Allen Bradley PLCs, Fanuc Robots, Siemens PLCs, Yaskawa Robots, you are robots. Those are just a few of the top brands within the industry. But if you search like PLC top brands or robot top brands, uh, you'll get a list of you know the top five, top ten, whatever you search, and that'll give you a direction of what devices is best to learn on. Uh, obviously, if you go for like number one and number two, it's going to be the most optimal. Uh, for example, when it comes to PLC. Generally, Allen Bradley and Siemens consume about 80% of the market over here in America. Now, that could be different in other places in the world, but for here, that's kind of what it looks like. If you can't get your hands on the software or the PLCs of the top brands just because it's overall too expensive, that completely makes sense. And starting off with just about any PLC will do the job. You're just best off trying to find out what people are using. So you can use Automation Direct PLCs. Uh, we just did a video on the Phoenix Contact PLC that's very configurable. You can put different inputs and outputs on it, analog inputs, analog outputs. The device comes in at like 100 bucks for the base module, and overall for like $250, you can get it. You can get everything that you need to be able to program that. The PLC programming software is free for that device, so you can actually download that PLC programming software, and you don't even have to buy the device. You can literally program it and simulate it right off the free software. So right there is a perfect way for you to go ahead and start programming. Just download that free software. There's other PLC providers that offer free software. Uh, Automation Direct, being that they're so cheap, there's a lot of manufacturers who have utilized those PLCs. So even though they're a budget PLC and they're not the top, they're kind of like the top, one of the top cheap PLCs just because they are so cheap and easy to get a hold of because you can go to automationdirect.com and just purchase them. So just overall, get your hands on those devices and start programming. Like literally, don't even worry about looking up videos per se. Just download the software and just start playing around with the different tools within the software, dragging things around, dropping them, just seeing how they react. Try to download, try to run your simulation, see if it th throws any errors. Just go into that process of like just learning the software itself, learning where different things are at. And if you have no understanding of PLCs and whatnot, then yes, you're going to have to start, like learn some basic PLC stuff. And that kind of brings me into one of my next thing is, is maybe take an external PLC course. I think you should absolutely take an external PLC course or robot programming course overall to start learning different languages or even structured text. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of content out there on how to program and structure text. So like overall just learning programming. Now, if you're not looking to get into like the programming side of things, then if it's electrical engineering, then 
start looking up how to use AutoCAD and, and whatever CAD software that you think you're going to use, but Autodesk is one of the main ones. Look up like the top three electrical engineering softwares and like the top three mechanical engineering softwares. Start playing around with those different tools and, and watching YouTube videos on how to do it. Uh, same thing, you know, going back into the programming side of things, I'm really going to focus and kind of use that as our demonstration. But this kind of applies to everything. You have YouTube videos that you can watch a ton of different stuff on. LinkedIn, there's content on LinkedIn for being able to do PLC pr programming. There's even LinkedIn ha offers courses. Now, you do have to get the sales navigator or some premium version of LinkedIn to be able to access their, their course training and whatnot. But it's super worth it. It's super valuable. And you should be on LinkedIn if you're trying to get a job in the industrial automation space or really any industry at all. And so you should really be spending your time outside of class and learning some extra stuff. Like you've just put in a couple extra hours a day will literally like 10x you in comparison to the other students in that class who are not spending those extra couple hours a day. There's this thing called the multiplier effect. And essentially the multiplier effect is where you're spending a little bit more time doing something, but it adds a multiplication of the amount of value that it adds. So like if you're putting in, let's say, four hours in school and then four hours outside of school, uh, that equals eight hours total, right? Well, with the multiplier effect, maybe you're getting a worth of 16 hours worth of value out of it. And the reason for that is, is let's say first you're spending those four hours in school and you're learning stuff in school, but you're kind of not understanding half the things that they're teaching you. And so you're kind of confused and you, you know, a lot of shit's just going over your head and you're not really extracting as much value as out of it as you can. And, and you're not even educated enough to ask the proper questions of like, hey, you know, how what, what's the difference between a dent and an int? And like, you may not even know what a data type is. So if you don't even know what a data type is, how can you ask a question, what's the difference between a dent and an int? So that multiplier effect plays such a huge role, such a huge impact in, in being able to extract as much knowledge as you can out of school. You know, for me, my, one of my big value adds is I worked for a systems integrator while I was in college. So being that I was already in the industry before I even graduated uh, was like huge, huge plus. Like if that's another thing, if you can get a job doing anything in the industry, like it don't even matter if you're sweeping the floors. At least being around a guy talking about a robot is gonna be more than not. Uh, it's gonna be way better than working at a McDonald's or something like that and then trying to get out of college and then get a job for a systems integrator. You're, you're much better off like getting a manufacturing job or systems integrator job and sweep the floors there. Do, do nothing even applicable to the job if that's what it takes to get your foot in the door. Uh, obviously, if you can get somebody to allow you to start doing some type of PLC program, robot programming or anything like that, even if it's just kind of playing around and you're having to do it at $8 an hour or whatever your minimum wage is, do it. Take, take advantage of that because the amount of skill set that you're going to grow going that route is going to be unmatched to any other. And then on top of that, while you're in school, you're going to have that multiplier effect. This is kind of a side topic, but it's something that kind of blows me away. And I was probably the exact same way when I was younger, but somebody will look at taking a job as like $8 at like $8 an hour and be like, Oh, I'm not going to work for $8 an hour. So you're not going to work for $8 an hour to build a skill set, but you'll pay a college for them to teach you something. So in one hand, you're, you're paying somebody to teach you something. In the other hand, you're getting paid to learn something. So the point behind that is be willing to take the sacrifice up front to be able to get the education so then you can move on to bigger and better things. To be honest, like majority of my career, I was paid kind of garbage. Like whenever I told people how much I made in the industry and the different engineers and stuff I was working with, they were like, what the hell? Like they were just blown away that I was making as little as I was. And I knew I was well underpaid. But I knew that the value add that I was getting and the exposure that I was getting to the different automated systems and like they would just let me float around to different different projects and, and kind of just maneuver within the company as I wanted to. Even as a rookie and, and more than an apprentice level individual, uh, I still had so much flexibility and freedom. And I know that part of them giving me that freedom was that they were underpaying me. So they had less leverage to be able to require more out of me and require out a lot more output out of me so i was able to have more research and development time i was able to learn different skill sets and and and, and to them it wasn't as big of a deal for because for them to pay somebody else to do that job that i was trying to learn they wasn't going to be able to touch what i was making at that particular time so with that being said it gave me free reign to to learn all the different skill sets that i learned all throughout my career so as a recap Educate yourself in your own free time, which is going to give you the multiplier effect, and you're going to be able to extract way more out of college. 
do that by working with PLC programming, robot programming, or electrical engineering, whatever it is, or whatever specific job that you'd like to have coming out of college. And if you don't have a specific job in mind, maybe this is the perfect time to start playing around with different stuff and, and trying to find out what it is that you do like. Utilize uh, tools like different PLC programming courses, whether it be on LinkedIn, be on LinkedIn, just get on LinkedIn and watch content. I didn't really mention that too much, but just scroll on LinkedIn and, and search industrial automation, hashtag automation, and just see what everybody's posting and really learn the industry as a whole. So that way you have a, a bigger picture of like what's going on in the industry. Like it's kind of crazy that like I'll even a lot of things didn't even open up to me until like I started my own company and I got outside of the company and I got outside of the engineering role and I really started looking at the grand scheme of like the entire industry, like what's going on in the industry, what are technologies that are coming up. You know, I did on as an engineering standpoint, but now I'm thinking of, of things in like way more so of like a manufacturing mindset and just kind of like where the future of things are going to go and and, and, and me trying to navigate my company in a way that's gonna be ready and be ahead of the curve and maybe even implementing some of these newest technologies that are out on the market. So just, just do your research and, and just really just immerse yourself into the industry. I promise you, if you do that, you're gonna come out 10X as far as like your amount of skill set, your amount of capability, and overall, you're just gonna be able to get a job so much easier than the next guy because so many of these people coming out of college basically have no practical skills. So if you're able to come out of college and be like, yeah, I PLC programmed all these programs and I, you know, I learned, you know, how to do loops and, and do subroutines and, and being able to name off different terms and different programming strategies and whatnot. If you have anything in particular that you think will help other people learn more, uh, put it on the comments below. We just want to overall add as much value as we can. Just a little bit about us. We're a systems integrator. We specialize in robotic cells and we work with just about anything and everything inside of a robotic cell. So that may be vision for location, vision for inspection, line tracking, uh, all the safety related stuff that goes into developing and deploying a robotic cell. So if you have any applications that you'd like for us to look at, feel free to reach out. Also, if you don't know what application you'd like to automate, but you know you need to start automating, we also offer a consulting service where we can come in and look at your particular manufacturing facility and see what processes are the best processes to automate and to come up with a plan and a strategy to be able to automate your manufacturing facility. So guys, thank you for sticking around to the end. Add some value down in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like more industrial automation related content and we'll catch you in the next one.